the Western democracy or the Western ideals and the, like the liberal democracy uh, is actually quite a, uh, well, it's quite stable, but it's also quite fragile uh, in this sense that uh, it's like dancing between uh, chaos and tyranny all the time. Hello, welcome back to Tambo's Desk, a weekly podcast covering deep conversations on technology, philosophy, complex science, and cryptocurrencies. My name is Duke Mtambo, and the following is a conversation with Jakub Shimek, a co-founder of Wazesha Dao and an author of Wisdom Enterprising. In today's episode, I'll be talking with uh, Jakub Shimek about his article, American uh, Anarchy versus Chinese Control under the Daily Balajism series. And now, dear friend, here is Jakub Shimek. Well, how do you describe uh, the, to- the two potential uh, future scenarios of American anarchy and uh, Chinese control as described by Balaji in his book, The Network State? Uh, hi, Duke. Hi. So the American anarchy, I mean, it, Balaji uses this kind of uh, uh, names uh, like, you know, and it's like two A's or two C's. So Chinese control, American anarchy, it's like easier to remember. So, yeah. uh, so but it's basically like the summer of 2020, like the, the riots and something. Uh, if you think about it, like then they kind of went down, you know, uh, like, I mean, the, the now it's like, it's not calmer in the US or something, but the levels of crime um, uh, didn't go to the pre-COVID levels, you know, they, they, they stayed elevated. And so about what Balaji is doing is basically is just like extrapolating the trend uh, of uh, the, the situation in San Francisco, like with crime, where the, basically they kind of legalized the crime until 900 something dollars when you still uh, you can like you can uh, walk free and you can repeat it. Uh, uh, and there are some like uh, uh, physical flash mobs or like people just like coming with their cars and getting into I. I uh, Apple stores and like uh, just yeah just basically stealing in the broad the daylight um, which kind of get uh, uh, out of hand a bit and I guess they 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 will try to somehow stop it uh, but this kind of trend like with uh, the fentanyl addiction and homelessness and uh, 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 this kind of stealing or crime uh, uh, street crime if you extrapolate it to other cities or you think that it will actually spread to other cities in the US um, and then uh, and it will affect how the US works uh, in the medium term because let's say the law enforcement uh, people will feel not as um, appreciated as before or something so this is kind kind of like a scenario that uh, the u.s might be kind of disintegrating um, and uh, the federal level will get uh, less power uh, vis-a-vis the state uh, states and vis-a-vis like uh, like some yeah informal uh, groups or, or something like that so that's like the american uh, an, uh anarchy kind of sci-fi scenario yeah for the future I, and i have like one uh, interesting illustration that i tweeted about from the last year mm-hmm. and you can have many of these like proof uh, proof points so you can observe i don't know if it's like kind of like street ca- crime being accepted uh uh, or uh, the levels of uh, serious crimes like staying up, the like violent crime uh, being up uh, since uh, pre-COVID levels. Mm-hmm. But there is like one military base in the US where there were like uh, the soldiers there were like 27 times more likely to die within the US as in uh, as abroad because there were like 83 or something like uh, some kind of violent death uh, like uh, among those soldiers. It's like, I mean, it's a big military base, like, I don't know, a couple of thousand people, right? But like within uh, less than a year or something, uh, uh, like uh, like 80 people died or something. So it was like uh, because of some, I don't know, drug related crimes uh, or like some like kind of uh, fights between them. I don't know. It was like strange, but this is like uh, like one kind of just like one anecdote. Okay, the data is not the plural of anecdotes, um, but um, it's like one anecdote that like um, talks about this uh, 
uh, or illustrates this like the possible, it's like still just like it's a possible future scenario of American anarchy, meaning like the, the America is uh, leading to more disintegration, more decentralization, but it's not always good, you know, and more chaos. So that's like the, the scenario, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, well, uh, um, how does Balaji's uh, figure eight theory uh, differ from the Hosh, uh, I mean, Hoshu theory? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, he, he talks about uh, like this kind of possible disintegration or like uh, the, the more chaos ahead also on Barry Weiss uh, Substack uh, in a kind of poetic essay. Uh, but he, uh, in many other podcasts, he uses this uh, like example when he's like explaining this uh, CCP, uh, BTC, NYT kind of triangle that we also talked about. Uh, that uh, basically the the regular horseshoe uh, political theory, like of a harsh horseshoe, is like a kind of saying that the, the the left authoritarians, like the communists, are resembling the right authoritarians. You know, like the far right. I don't know. Uh, in a, in in also their rhetoric, uh, even if, uh, in their imaginary, but also in their kind of like e extreme kind of measures, like I don't know, you have gulags or you had concentration camps, you had like uh, uh, it leads kind of to many uh, like similar kind of uh, uh, behaviors and uh, like policies or something like that. So. That's like the horseshoe, you know, like uh, just focusing on the left authoritarianism and uh, the right authoritarianism. Balaji proposes something like not just a, like a horseshoe, but like uh, the number eight. So it's like, uh, you know, like it's like number eight. So because also the, the left libertarians and the right libertarians uh, are resembling each other in their rhetoric. And uh, so uh, the left, uh, the left ones say, uh, like we should be all equal and the rights uh, right libertarians say like you ain't the boss of me you know so it's like uh, but the sum of it like the vector of these like forces they might be opposed to each other like the left libertarians and the right libertarians mm -hmm. but the the sum of these uh, forces is down so it towards like more anarchy so that's like how uh, Balaji talks about like okay when Trump was elected, uh, many people feared like you get um, mm. more uh, tyranny, you know, there was actually this Timothy Snyder's book on tyranny, uh, and there was some lectures or lessons on how you should prepare what you should do, but actually what we saw was more chaos, you know, it wasn't like uh, he was like able to, I don't know, persecute some dissidents or something, but it was like, um, it was just like more chaos, and uh, and this is also like uh, something that uh, the future might bring. It's just like uh, not actually some kind of strong man, but like um, it's just like more chaos, uh, more kind of this uh, low level kind of uh, ambient like uh, viol vi uh, presence of street crime, violence and stuff like that. It's some kind of could resemble like Russia in the 90s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, more and more. Yeah. Okay. Um... Well, and um, well, you have mentioned about the American, uh, the American, the America, and also the China, the Chinese, or China. Um, well, what role does also India and the internet, uh, specifically Web three uh, protocols, could play in uh, mediating between American? Uh, anarchy and uh, Chinese control. Mm -hmm. uh, just to talk about the Chinese control a, bi uh, a bit. Uh, mm, yeah, so this is like the future sci-fi scenario where uh, there might be a sense of an attempted coup uh, inside of China or actually some like kind of real accusation of some uh, uh, coup d'etat attempts within China and they will be blamed on the West in general and on the US in particular. And as a result of that, China actually might clamp down on their like um, on the remnants of civil society there. So they're actually quite uh, authoritarian already, and they um, they went quite ultra nationalistic. And uh, like in the recent uh, ten years or the last decade, mm, uh, under uh, uh, yeah under Xi. So uh, uh, so this is like. Uh, this this kind of uh, this scenario of uh, 
um, Chinese control uh, might even like accelerate it uh, a lot. Uh, so uh, and like magnified a lot. So imagine China, but like say five five x uh, or ten x uh, more uh, kind of controlling and. Um, uh, of their population, so they might flex their like uh, hard power and like AI kind of capabilities, digital, and to form kind of like a digital uh, dictatorship that will know more about the citizens than that they know about themselves even, uh, kind of metaphorically speaking, or not even metaphorically, but uh, figuratively, but like, um, so this is like the, the danger of the digital dictatorship kind of or the long night, as uh, John Rupp calls it, uh, kind of scenario uh, that actually might get then exported worldwide. So you might, uh, you know, the China might uh, offer this technology uh, to like uh, elites uh, around the world uh, when uh, they will offer them protection and uh, the citizens they will offer uh, like uh, security. Uh, for in exchange for for freedom or something, but since it will be let's say it could be like also accompanied by drones uh, and like uh, like some drone armada or something, it's quite it could be actually quite scary, you know, because it's uh, uh, it might not be easy to to kind of then uh, escape it or create some kind of countervailing force against it or like some kind of descent because it's like they might know everything about you and what you are doing and who you are meeting and what you are planning and like uh, just like a kind of uh, it's like uh, almost like a minority report uh, coupled with some drone armada so it's not it's a uh, it's not a yeah funny uh, sci-fi scenario yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's Chinese uh, control and the uh, international intermediate. Uh, so it's like something in between, and it's just like here maybe just to illustrate it. So like the 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 Western democracy or the Western ideals and the, like the liberal democracy uh, is actually quite a uh, well. It's quite stable, but it's also quite fragile uh, in this sense that uh, it's like dancing between uh, chaos and tyranny all the time. But it's quite stable uh, in in a way that let's say um, there is uh, yeah uh, the uh, one guy okay just like uh, just like <laughs> okay so uh, it's like one example uh, that for example you are um, uh, if the the telephone pole or or, or something like imagine like a giant pencil in the size of a, of a telephone pole or like the electric this cable a cable pole or I don't know how you call it and uh, if it's standing uh, upright like vertically you could kind of be on a on a ladder and you could just hold it very easily like like it's, I don't know with one finger or something you know because it's a giant pole but it's like uh, being stable because it's like vertically upright but once it uh, falls down then it's uh it's very you need a lot of force to to put it again uh, back up so it's something like when you have like a high trust society and uh, uh and you have a high trust society well-functioning organizations then it seems like uh yeah everything is is great and it's like just smooth it like everything goes like the trade goes the uh, people feel secure they don't need to lock uh, everything up or they don't need to i don't know have uh, bodyguards all, uh, everywhere around them or something you know you can you can just trust people that uh, uh, if you send them invoice they will pay you you can trust your judges or institutions uh, but it's uh, it's not a it's it, it, it's yeah it's great but it's not like uh, uh, this this will uh, last forever or this is automatic because it's like very special it's like really dancing between uh, chaos and tyranny you know it's like allowing uh, sufficient levels of innovation and of like uh, freedom and autonomy but also kind of providing some kind of structure uh, support uh, uh, security uh, and stuff like that so this is like the traditional uh, liberal western kind of idols and liberal democracies but you have like tyranny and you have like uh, anarchy on uh, on both sides and it's like uh, once you fall off uh, this kind of uh, attractor you might end up in a bad place and it's very difficult to get out of that bad place again to uh, your previous like attractor imagine 
it's like a ball of where there is a marble inside it and 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 you shake it more and more with the the, the uh, uh, with the the bowl uh, while also the the walls of the bowl uh, imagine if they're like shrinking so like so the 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 bowl is getting shaken uh, 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 more and more that's because like the external pressures of today's world like covid and um and some other issues economic uh, issues and stuff like that and also like the the, the walls of the uh, the bowl are like uh, the the power of institutions or something is also like crumbling or getting smaller and weaker and so and it, once the marble is like being shaken enough it's actually quite possible that it will uh, it will fly away from the bowl uh, to another bowl and that bowl might be some another attractor basin, another state which uh, might be actually tyranny or anarchy uh, or, or something like which is not a liberal Western democracy. And so Balaji talks about like something like the, what could be actually the continuation of the Western ideals of uh, freedom, capitalism, uh, sovereignty, uh, equality, these kind of uh, things. And actually he sees India as... Um, uh, and also Israel and also other countries, it actually, actually it could be Kenya as well. You know, it's like the, the countries that uh, are like forks uh, uh, of the, the British common law, you know. So you have like a, Israel is a former colony or like the, the fork, the Singapore, uh, even Kenya, you know, India. And so, but they, they, they are still uh, the countries on their like... Uh, arc towards centralization or uh, like towards uh, uh, kind of like uh, the where the institutions are getting stronger because they had like quite a hard uh, a century uh, last century but now they are able to uh, execute uh, projects in the physical world like some big infrastructure projects delivering high-speed internet delivering uh, like uh, 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 national ID kind of uh, like a stack, uh, digital stack, like digital identity in, in, in the case of India. And so he sees India as actually like, like a billion uh, uh, population of a billion people who have also like uh, many of them are English speakers and they're like um, similar actually to Kenya and other, other countries. And so he sees uh, these kind of countries as the continuation of the Western ideals, you know, after the, the, the sci-fi scenario of the, the US, uh, the American anarchy. So like these countries like Israel, uh, India, um, Singapore could be like the international intermediates. And he sees uh, them, uh, what they, they could actually do, they could be like the third world that actually uh, will end up the first this century. So it's like... Uh, in the last century, uh, you had some, uh, you, you had like the uh, the un, uh, the non-aligned movement. Uh, well, let's say where there was Yugoslavia, Cuba, some other countries, India actually, and now what you could get was is like the the aligned movement, meaning like the aligned around uh, Web three protocols. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, global protocols that uh, mean rule of code. You know, not just a rule of law, law or uh, of one particular law, like one hegemonic power or something like that, uh, but like the rule of code, like which is like. Uh, global uh universal and it's kind of uncorruptible so like he sees like these countries embracing uh, web3 and crypto uh and also western ideals so mm -hmm. it's like the third attractor uh, between uh the u.s anarchy and the china uh, uh, sorry the american anarchy and the chinese control okay well uh as we wind up this conversation how can Web3 technology facilitate the alignment within our communities and address the limitations of both capitalism and uh, central planning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so uh, uh, you could have uh, bottom-up uh, communities as uh, biology talks elsewhere about like startup societies, network unions. So it could be like you can grow like fractally, like uh, have a uh, it's basically uh, it it allows uh, mm, 
sovereign collectives. So it's not just like sovereign individuals, uh, like uh, it's kind of like a libertarian uh, ideal. Like, like let's see uh, Elon Musk, you know, he's like, he gets uh, respect also from uh, China and he's actually able to reform, let's say some uh, local reg regulations in Shanghai to, to build a gigafactory there. Mm. He is like uh, he can uh, get Starlink to U Ukraine within two days, uh, uh, and he yeah I mean he's you know he just bought Twitter you know so he's actually playing the 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 game and and uh, and he's like uh, yeah he's the example of the sovereign individual of today or like kind of like a strong person but like uh, Web three actually uh, enables to um, people to. Uh, to get, to get uh, uh, their private keys and get uh, like uh, to own their their work. So, for example, if you are a creator on uh, on some social media platform, even Twitter, after Elon Musk, I don't know, there might be some like uh, mistake while he's rolling uh, some new features or. Uh, uh, he gets something wrong, like some people got cancelled, even Paul Graham <laughs> uh, got like uh, uh, for a while and then Elon Musk uh, apologized because it was some technical mistake, I guess, uh, but uh, people got uh, cancelled for like uh, referring to their Mastodon pages or something, you know, like uh, just people like, oh, I'm sick of this Twitter, you can find me on my Mastodon something link and they change the rules in, on Twitter. So if you're promoting like some other social networks, you, your account can get suspended or something. And so it's basically... Uh, Twitter, uh, 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 not just Twitter, but like uh, social media of today uh, and the internet actually of today is like China before uh, Deng Xiaoping, uh, meaning uh, that uh, <laughs> you don't own a teeth in your head, basically. So it's like the capitalism was prohibited. Uh, and it's actually, Balaji talks about the, how the capitalism was punishable by death in China uh, before Deng Xiaoping. And then he came up with this uh, a simple moral uh, innovation uh, um, uh, of uh, profit is good, you know. So uh, it's like a, some uh, some kind of story uh, there, like about farmers that uh, had some bumper harvest and they actually signed some kind of like uh, uh, some secret document between them that uh, they they will keep a part of. Uh, of the harvest and they will <laughs> do the capitalism and if they are punished then uh, the other guys will take care of their kids if somebody is discovered and then and then uh, Deng Xiaoping instead of like executing them he mm -hmm. he was like okay let's do this uh, uh, experiment let's uh, let's do this uh, special economic zones and like uh, let's slowly build out and test this uh, like capitalism like profit is good uh, model and so you got like these special economic zones and uh, with some kind of like uh, mottos uh, also like uh, transforming China, like mottos like uh, backwards will be beaten or uh, black cat, white cat, it doesn't matter. The important thing is that it catches mice, you know, this kind of approach. And so the China was transformed uh, thanks to capitalism. And I think that this is what actually Web3 or crypto can bring to uh, the global internet because it's financial internet. And um, it uh, basically means that uh, you can take uh, possession of your uh, uh, of, of, of your creations. Like if you are an online creator, uh, you shouldn't just uh, you should, it's you shouldn't just get cancelled like uh, like for, uh, for I don't know once one stupid comment or uh, uh, or joke or something but you uh, you should own uh, your social graph basically so for example now you you are on Twitter and technically you could download your content from Twitter right or from Facebook and now you have like all your comments but but you don't own your social graph. So you, you, you can't download and contact all the people that you, uh, that, that are your friends or your fans or, uh, yeah, your followers. Mm -hmm. You can't contact them, you know, like uh, you, it's just, uh, it's like the social graph is owned by Twitter or by Facebook or other media. And you are there basically like a peasant or like a serf uh, that doesn't have a digital property rights because you can get cancelled anytime, you know, it's just like you, you do something politically incorrect, then you get cancelled. 
but uh, the proposition of crypto is like you have root keys and that's what Balaji talks about it. you have root access you have root access over that is uh, over your uh, digital property that is independent from either the the old us establishment or the ccp establishment so yeah that's you are with with web3 you are independent of the us establishment and the chinese establishment so it's like the third pole and it should get embraced by countries like india or israel or singapore and uh and to create something like a de-aligned movement you know and so the third world can actually come uh first in this century if they if they embrace crypto yeah. <laughs> uh yeah Thank you once again for your time uh, at Intambo's desk. Thank you, Duke. <laughs> Take care. It was a pleasure. Well, that brings us to the end of this episode. If you enjoyed listening to Intambo's desk, uh, please subscribe, give this episode a thumbs up, and be sure to come back next week for another episode. Until then, this is Duke Kumtambo, and don't forget to do good always. Thank you.